I couldn't find an instructional video for the PDF models Kerr, Stuart, Skylark. Uh, they do provide a PDF instruction sheet for it, which has got lots of pictures and a step-by-step -step set of instructions. But I thought, do people do like to see uh, instructional videos? Uh, and uh, so what it comes with is acrylic sheets for the chassis, cab, and 3D printed parts for these. And it also uh, comes with uh, motor, gearbox, wheels. So there's the 3D printed parts in one bag, the acrylic sheet parts in another bag. I think that thing there is the roof. And there's the motor, and I think that's the a couple of um, resin cast parts. So there are some resin cast parts uh, as well, which is, I see the back head there, and I think there's the um, boiler door there, and the uh, dome or something there as well as resin cast parts. Now, what else am I uh, using to complete it? Well, um... For the 3D printed parts, uh, there are the lines that you get in general on 3D printed parts. And so you need to sand those down to smooth that off. Yeah, so this is preparation. Sanding you to remove those uh, uh, things there. Yep, okay. Uh, so, just while I move the camera, a set of various grades of wet and dry paper, coarse down to fine. And the instructions do tell you what grades you will need for the different operations. But clearly, to start off with, on the 3D printed parts, you need the more coarse one to get rid of the lines. And then when you've done that, what you need, not is, isn't particularly body filler, you don't need filler, but a high build primer so this is not the halfords one it's wilco motor save just got it 6.99 and this is gray plastic primer so sand high build primer sand with the finer grade gray plastic primer and then you're ready to prepare i think you might need to give it another sand before you use your top livery coat the acrylic parts, you key up with a fine grade of um, uh, this wet and dry from over there, the wet and dry paper. And after you've keyed it, just keyed it with a fine grade, you use the straightforward grey plastic primer. So everything ends up in that. So a lot less uh, sanding to do just to key that one up. And then with the resin parts, uh, something in between. Uh, but again, you get them with grey plastic primer. So at the end of the day, uh, with a bit more sanding and the high build primer on this one, uh, everything has got its uh, nice smooth coat of the grey plastic primer. Okay, all in rattle cans there. Now, so uh, to glue the acrylic together, you need one of the, uh, I think, I can't remember what you said, but uh, this is mech, the old fashioned mech, mech pack, methyl ethyl ketone. I've used that before. How much have I got left? There's a bit left in there. There's enough to do this job. But you get that glue that you use for acrylic and it does recommend the glue to use in there. What does it say? Dichlor methane for the acrylic dichloromethane uh, you'll find it in model shops for everything else uh, it's recommended super glue so I've just bought myself a new tube of super glue you know what I've thrown away uh, two or three of these what I've bought though is the high viscosity or thick super glue because I've glued a few 3d things together and I have found that the high viscosity or thick super glue works better. This is the Everbuild. It's called Stick 2 Super Glue HB. 
Uh, it's a named brand from Amazon um, and it's the high viscosity or it's the thick uh, one. Yep, that's what I've used. You can, can use the thin one and I have used very successfully from the pound shop, you can get a pack of, I don't know, half a dozen little tubes, what I would call single use tubes. And the great thing about that is until you open the tube, it's not going to go off. Uh, and so you can use it for the job. And then at the end of the couple of hours or the day when you finish using it, that's all right. You can throw the tube away. You don't have to even think about uh, trying to store it or reseal it. Uh, with this one, um, I'm hoping to build this kit and a couple of other things with it. Uh, before that super glue goes off because uh, there's quite a lot in there and I have and what I bought was I bought a thick and a thin different color tops uh, at an exhibition you'll have seen them if you've been around the exhibition there's a guy there with a microphone on and speaker selling the super glues he shows it he uses it to weld or glue together um, a round belt which he uh, then pulls. So it's quite impressive. High fix, that's what it's called. Uh, Liverpool company, high fix super glue. But you know, this is more or less the same stuff as one of theirs. Okay, that's the first bit. Oh, just wanted to just show this. Rivets, my goodness. I'm going to enjoy that, aren't I? Rivet detail. Uh, they will need detaching and then uh, a quick blow over with the spray. Oh my goodness, that's going to be fun. So that's the thing. Uh, what else have I got here? Um, a, a, a jumble of tools over there after the last job. Uh, this is useful. Cheap little uh, vice. It's not a precision vice or anything, but it clamps onto this table here. And allows me to hold things. I've got elastic bands. Uh, which help hold things together while the glue sets. I've got a, a box of pegs over there, uh, little pliers and cutters, screwdrivers, things like that over there. That's a nice, neat little screwdriver uh, for smaller screws. Uh, sorry, it's such a jumble. And these are, is this is my box of needle files that I've amassed over the years normal ones and there's some diamond ones in there and some of those sanding sticks uh, of, uh, which have got coarse on one side fine on the other i've got another set of those somewhere uh, but i've got more needle files and i know what to do with those the diamond ones uh, they're useful with anything like this for removing little bits and then uh, i did buy again you buy it once, hopefully, an exacto kit. But it's basically it's a scalpel uh, plus a couple of other bits. It's got the saw in there, and that block there is a sanding bit. So it's got a few blades. It's got the uh, razor saw in there, uh, a block which I've used a couple of times for cutting some things, and handles for the um, for those. Oh, the other thing I've got there. What's that one? Oh, there's some small drills. So files, small drills in there, you know, the one millimeter, and two millimeter drills. And over there, I've got an Archimedes drill. Oh, there it is. Uh, I don't think I'll be drilling any holes, but I've also got an electric battery operated drill somewhere for, for larger things. Um, but uh, over the years, you accumulate these things and I managed to get them into one box. While you're on the video, look in there, you'll see some drills. Yeah. Okay. Picked up again at different model shops from different model supply companies over the years. There we go. First stage, uh, step one of the video. Um, I might keep them in different bits. Just the uh, materials that are used as I go through it. If I find I need to use any more materials then I'll get back to you. Um, I don't think I need to show you me sand, 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 sanding, high build primer. If there is anything specific that I think uh, needs uh, bringing to your attention, 
then I might pause and do another video. But I'm expecting that by the time I come back to you again, will be in a few days, a week's time, when I've prepared my um, materials. So if I need to do anything special, uh, that's when I'll tell you about it. But it might all be in grey primer by then, ready for the assembly and application of the super glue. And the first job, once this is painted, is uh, the frames. Oh, because it's in the instructions, you see, so I know what's coming up there. They've been painted in a black there, so I might use my matte black rattle can. Uh, and so you put the plain frames together, but then you're moving straight on to some 3D printed parts then uh, to assemble onto your frames. Uh, so those will have been prepped prior to that. Let's see how I get on.